Well, we thank you so much for the chance to eat, especially if you're Nikki or Shannon, because this has been waiting a long time. Come and we thank you for the chance to talk about you, enjoy yeah. time with each other. We pray for everyone at this table and in this room, for the yeah. families and households we represent, for your blessing over your families, your people this season. We love you. We thank you, God. Amen. 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 Okay, so while we eat, let's talk about when you first met Jesus. I don't know a time where I didn't know Jesus. It's, it's all been like one and the same in the sense of like loving Jesus and being passionate about his church and his house. But then it's been, okay, how am I gonna grow this? How am I gonna grow with this relationship with Jesus and make sure that it's not just like this religious thing, but actually something that's for me personally. And that's just been over the years. And a lot of that happened also when I came to college. Yeah. Because when you're, you know, out and you're lonesome for the first time. Oh boy. <laughs> That's when it's real. Hi, Jesus. Are you here? What's going on? What do you mean this isn't my parents' faith? Yeah. yeah. This has to be my faith, and how am I going to walk it out dealing with, like, the trials and tribulations and the things that come? It wasn't like a road to Damascus, uh, Damascus moment or anything like that. It was uh, two months of... Um, slipping in the back of a church service, uh, kind of late, leaving early, you know, that kind of thing. But I kept coming back because I was like, there's, there's, there's something here. And, um, and eventually in a, in a service, like, you know, gave my life to Christ. Yeah, your story shocks me because it, it really does just come down to the invitation. Yeah. If someone asked, you said yes. Yeah. And then <laughs> someone invited you back and you're like, sure, I'll come back. And we make it so hard. We yeah. make it this big ordeal about like, who's preaching the day yeah. I invite my friend. Yeah. <laughs> Please do my favorite songs. Yeah. But like really, just people waiting to be asked. So, and, and people yeah. just want a home to belong to and people to lean, in, lean on and have that support and someone to journey life with that you can actually, was it be known and be loved? Mm -hmm. Was it fully known and fully loved? I think that's one of the biggest things that most of us, while we come home, is because we're yearning to be known and loved. You walk around the laundry. I didn't grow up in a Christian home. My parents are the best, but like, honestly, we had a lot of freedom. And I got invited to church from a friend, ended up giving my life to Christ, and I was really sold out, like everything. I immediately we kind of got really involved. I was singing, I was dancing, I was a youth leader. I was um, speaking to girls and really just sold out for years and just loved it. And my parents didn't really understand. My mom was a little bit jealous of how much I was hanging out at church. Like when I got grounded, I got grounded from going to church. Yep. Like that was kind wow. of the thing. In the midst of that, I kind of experienced my first heartbreak. It was really hard on me as a young girl. Yeah. And I was kind of like very confused at why this happened, very confused at why someone within the church would hurt me like this, very confused at what I was supposed to do from there and what my relationship with Jesus was like. But I really kind of made a commitment to falling in love with Jesus and learning about Jesus and getting deeper and deeper into my relationship with Him. And I ended up learning so much about my value and my worth. I learned how to make new friends that all my friends before have been friends that I had grown up with. And I think that really set me up for a huge win to where I'm at now in my adult life and with my family and where we're established now here. And yeah. What's cool though as well, um, so you're mentioning your mum and I just remembered like every colour I look around and, and think of this as well, but your mum uh, made a decision to follow Jesus yeah. at, at Colour. Conference. when she came and joined yeah. me at Colour. Yeah. She'd watched your faith all those years mm. yeah. and yeah. Then it all kind of landed for her as well. Yeah, it turned out that when now my sister who's five years younger than me, when she'd get grounded she had to come to church with me. Don't <laughs> 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 yeah. send me to church with mistakes. I know. <laughs> Is there a moment or a season in your life where that faith went from being something that your family did or something that was at school and something that you really decided to carry in your own spirit? Oh, definitely. I think I've always had a deep conviction about that Jesus is real and He is who I want to follow all, my, all the days of my life, but it plays out in reality in, in, in suffering, I think. and. Um, you know, I, I lost, but I've lost both my parents to cancer, and I think in each of those situations, you, feelings are overwhelming and they are fickle. And so you either go with your convictions or you go with your feelings. And I, there are times when I've had to stand and go, okay, 
This is my conviction that God is good and that He is faithful, yeah. but my feelings are all over the place. Mm -hmm. So what am I going to build my trust and faith on? And that is the conviction that He is good, He mm -hmm. is healer despite what I'm seeing. Yeah. And I will stand in that. So that's, I think, where the fire comes into it all and mm -hmm. you get refined in it. What has the aspect of community meant to you that's helped you like stay embedded and hold to those convictions? I, I think it's that um, that verse in the Bible that says iron sharpens iron and you need those people around you to keep to keep you sharp and to keep to encourage you to sit with you in the suffering but also not allow you to stay there longer than you need to. I think there's but I, I do have a like I think lament and repentance and suffering is really what mm -hmm. this season of Lent is all about as mm -hmm. well. It's a season of shadows mm -hmm. and um, it is a time where you do have to embrace lament and suffering and not shy away from it. Mm -hmm. And I think, especially in this time that we're in at the moment, there is suffering and the earth is groaning all over the world. And, um, but, and there's power in being able to sit with that and to acknowledge it and to see what is, where is God in this. And the Psalms talk about God being the first responders to our suffering. And I think that is um, where we can be honest and vulnerable with each other and go to the Word and say, yes, that is where God is with us right now, that the resurrection is coming and joy is on the horizon. And I just, I think that's where it's at for me. Yeah. I like It's been a couple of years, <laughs> to say the least. This year feels like a whole this year. This year. And it's only March. It's it only March and yeah. wow. Well, and you know what? This last two years has knocked a lot of faith out of a lot of people, and understandably so. But now I think God is calling us to a place where he goes, don't be afraid, just believe. Like, that's all I'm asking of you. Do not choose fear. You have to choose your faith yeah. and watch me perform a miracle. Watch me just open up the floodgates of heaven yeah. and pour out a blessing that you won't be able to contain it. And so yeah. that is, I'm like, I'm geared up of going, okay, I'm ready to see things that I have not seen before because I'm going to choose just to believe. Dude, you're fired up. I love it. Right? Let's go. Like, um, I was just being reminded of that the, parable, uh, the story in the Bible where the woman who has the issue of blood and she's been and she just says if I can just touch that hem yeah. of his garment if I can just do that that shows faith and it yeah. shows trust in him and I think sometimes you go through your days and you think if I can just touch the hem that's all that I yeah. can do and all I, I can yeah. give at the moment and he says I'll take that that's that's good for me <laughs> I need that right I now that. I can do that exactly. I can touch the hem and it'll be enough yeah. Um, it, he just asks you to bring what you've got. I love the lead up into Easter because, I don't know, just remembering what Jesus did. Like, we should do this all the time, right? But just the fact that we get to sit here and we get to camp around how much Jesus loves us and, and what he was willing to go through for us reminds me of what life was like before I knew Jesus. Yeah. And I think when you can remember when, what life was like, if you, ha you can remember a time when life was like, I'm like, I never want to ever live in that place ever again. It gives you this fresh revelation that there's so many people who are still there and haven't yet heard or haven't yet seen. And um, yeah, that kind of, ex it excites me because I know that Jesus wants to do the same in them as he's already done in us. The thing that I'm going to add is encouraging someone that I've never met before. Good girl. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not trying to sound deep or anything, but like, there's a lot of people who are having like a rough time. When I first came to our school, I remember um, one of my like, best friends now, she just said, hi. She was just like, do you want to hang out with me and my friends at long time? I'm, I'm like, yes, please. <laughs> that kind of like, I don't know really helped me a bit. Just that word, just saying hi to someone could like help, just help so many people. You can also encourage people that you do know. Yeah. Like, 
parents. You guys are looking amazing today. <laughs> if that's what you do, you're doing it pretty well. Thinking about Easter, you said it before, with everything that's going on around us, so aware that there is, um, there's so much life and you know, there's so much death in the same moment and God is in both of those moments and He wants to be present in both of those moments and He's not absent in one or the other. Um, and Easter between Friday and Sunday reminds me of that, that it's a space where God is present, God is not absent and it's a space to remember, to repent and to celebrate. The table is this beautiful place where we can be vulnerable and real and eat really good food. And um, I just am grateful for the vulnerability, so thanks for being real and being here and um, two more dinners at the table. Huzzah! 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 Huzzah!